In this devlog, I'm going to share with you how I bring to life this teapot enemy character in Unity. Hey guys, Adam here from Pixel Mystic. In the previous devlog, I shared how I made this teapot enemy character using Blender. You can check it out right here. So now, I'm going to show you how I integrate this character into my game project. If you're new to this channel, do consider subscribing so you won't miss any of the devlogs that I upload. Okay, so the first thing I did was to develop the enemy HP or hit points or health. And luckily I can just copy paste from the previous enemy, the broom enemies uh, script. And I just needed to do that while also modifying the values and play around with it. At the moment, the values are uh, pretty loose simply because I'm not at a stage where I'm want to balance the game just yet so just playing around a value of maybe a hundred and just leaving it at that I might even lower it actually maybe 50 just to make it easier for me to kill the enemy and then move on when I'm doing testing now I'll also play around with the resistance of the enemy Basically, each enemy in What The Hex would have different kinds of defenses. They would be able to resist certain types of spell damage that is inflicted upon them by the player. So, for example, the Broom enemy may be weak against fire-based attacks, but can resist lightning-based attacks. So, for this Teapot enemy, let's flip it around. I can modify the resistance quite easily here in unity i exposed the variable and made fire resistance uh, maybe 80 and then light or lightning resistance maybe much lower which is 10. so i'm going to switch up my layout here in unity so that i can easily look at what's going on in the game during runtime while also seeing the values drop i don't have the ui for the enemy health bar just yet so I'm using Unity's actual UI to see if the health drops to zero and cool seems to be working as I'm hitting the enemy here with my fireballs or lightning bolts you can see the health depleting and when it's done it just gets removed from the scene by right we should then be able to also put in the death animation that I worked on in my previous devlog but there's some issues with it and for some weird reason it's inconsistent but it's okay I decided to look at it later on okay now that the enemy HP is working I decided to move on and work on the enemy movement this is again another copy from the broom enemy and what I did was just to copy the enemy script for movement and tweaked around with the values a bit. So the enemies in what the hex would have a certain range, but taking a step before that, the enemies would also be able to track the player. So as you can see here, as I move around, the teapot enemy right now is also tracking the player. That's the first thing that I implemented. The next thing is to identify a way for the enemy to move in and chase the player. And at the moment, a lot of my code is very messy and the way I name certain variables are quite inconsistent as well. So I probably have to look into how I can clean these um, these things up later on. But I just want to quickly test things first and verify my ideas before doing like proper work. So right now it's called walking distance set to zero just so that I can show you guys um, how the enemy is tracking without actually chasing the player. So if I play around this value and let's say I put 10, the enemy starts to chase the player. And it plays the 
walk animation. I have implemented a nav mesh, navigation mesh, which is a Unity component that allows basically enemy AI to navigate around the level. Right, so as you can see here, this is the nav mesh that was pre-baked uh, before and anything in blue indicates that it's a safe zone for the enemy AI or rather the enemy object to move around. So the enemy character can move around within the blue zone and there are areas here that indicate that, that the enemies won't be able to walk into. So this uh, cauldrons right here, that's this long bench and all the other objects in the scene, they cannot go through because, well, I don't allow them to go through. It would be weird. So this is one of the many ways that the enemy knows where to go and where they cannot go. Same thing with the boundaries of the level. The enemy will not float in midair like here because it is not defined as a safe walkable area. It's not a safe navigation area. So the nav mesh allows us to define areas that's safe to walk or navigate. Cool, now that the movement and the HP and enemy resistance is done, next thing to implement would be the enemy attack. So the attack will be slightly different from the previous enemy because the broom is a melee enemy and the teapot is a ranged enemy. So I had to modify the script a little bit. At the moment, he's not attacking the player. So I needed to change that by adding a new behavior to define the range of attack. And then I also added some code to spawn a projectile. And that projectile itself will have its old script that does damage to the player. So let's see that in action. So I need to add an enemy attack range for a teapot as well. So this is where we can change the value. And let's say the range of attack is five. When I click play, First, the enemy will start by approaching me, and then there you go, there's an attack animation. And the projectile is spawned. So the other thing I did was to also add the projectile that flies through. That object, that projectile object is a separate object that is spawned every time the teapot enemy decides to shoot. And that object, that is the projectile object, has also a particle that looks like a chocolate, <laughs> uh, like a brown tea. So the projectile itself is a separate object that I created and it's basically a particle that I try to mimic like a liquid emitting substance that will look cloud, almost like a cloud of smoke combined with liquid so it's like boiling hot tea that's spitting out from the teapot so when you add a bit of velocity to it it'll start to really show its true form if I just let go and let it be it'll just be well almost non-existent so basically the particle is like a bunch of animation playing and based on the rules that I've set it will then behave a certain way and it then, like I said, will create the illusion of flying tea. 
on its own, it's just pure presentation. So this is basically this particle is just going to f uh, not even fly around. It's just going to stay static like this. So what's really making the T fly is actually the script that I separately have to attach, which is right here. That this script tells the T particle to move in a certain direction, a certain speed. And on top of that, upon impact to the player, it will do something. So in this case, upon impact to the player, it will emit, it will reduce the player's health and cause damage. And on top of that, it will also graphically, presentation wise, create another particle, which I have right here for now to show that it's um, destroyed. But I haven't created a separate liquid particle for it on impact. So I'm borrowing from the player's fire spell impact particle. So it's very similar right now. So we have play right here. Whenever it hits. Yeah, it looks very similar to this. To the player's fireball. But it'll do for now. It's really for me to test around, play around with, you know, the various behaviors that this enemy will have before I actually move on to iterate further and perfect it in terms of the presentation. That's how game development works. You test out your ideas first, you try out different things and then see what works, what doesn't. And then you keep on iterating and polishing up the different effects, the presentation, all that over time. So basically that's the basic implementation of the teapot enemy character for now. So let's have a play again and see if you guys can spot any problems with this because I can already see a few problems. Let's make this easier to see. I can switch to my other view so that this is better when it comes to seeing the entire screen. Now when I approach the enemy, you can see right there, it's sliding for some reason before it plays the actual movement animation. By right, the teapot should be hopping up and down like that, but instead it's sliding quite a bit. Not sure what's going on there, but it's definitely a bug. But yeah, definitely my code is very messy. So there's a bunch of bugs that will definitely encounter, especially in this early stage. So the enemy teapot sliding is definitely an issue. The next issue is if you can see closely, the projectile shooting animation and the projectile shooting itself is not in sync. At times it does look like it's in sync, but a lot of times it's not. And I've played around with the fire rate. I have a variable just to play around with to see whether or not I can match that with the animation itself. Basically, there's a lot of different ways for me to solve this problem, but I rather not touch the animation timing itself that would require me to go back and forth in Blender. I would rather play around with uh, the code aspect, uh, the code itself and implement a way to fix this. So that's another thing for me to take note. Let's switch back to my previous view, split screen. Let's duplicate a bunch of these guys. For debugging purposes, so that we don't have to keep replaying and restarting new thing over and over again. Now we have a bunch of teapots chasing us. Not sure from a game design perspective, do I want them to collide with each other? But that's a small issue. What I want to see is what happens when I shoot and kill one of them. A death animation did not play. Huh. 
it played there but very quickly like just a few frames and it disappears from the scene same thing there so that's definitely an issue that I have to fix moving forward so to summarize first of all the enemy slides from time to time when it's chasing the player next the enemy animation is very difficult to stay in sync with the actual attack projectile being spawned then finally one of the other more annoying problems i find is that the death animation isn't playing properly and the enemy will disappear very quickly before the death animation is complete all right so that's it for this devlog as you can see the basic implementation of the teapot enemy has a few problems that comes with it. As I mentioned before, I've implemented most of what the heck so far in a very messy manner. The problem is, I think moving forward, I have to refactor my entire code base before I fix any bugs or adding new features. Well, technically, if I refactor, that means there is no need for me to fix bugs that I have right now because everything will be rewritten and reorganized. I've been studying the Swords and Shovels course, and I think moving forward, I'll be referencing a lot from the lessons I've learned there. So check out the link in the description below. The course itself is free if you get Unity Plus, but you must pay for the full year. So in other words, it has to be prepaid Unity Plus for the whole year. That's what I got, and I got full access to the Swords and Shovels course on Pluralsight. Prosight is basically the company that is partnering up with Unity to provide this course. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. It is due to their generosity that I'm able to continue to develop this game and make more videos for this channel. If you enjoyed this devlog, hit that like button and consider subscribing so you won't miss my next upload. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.